Hey y'all, it's me again, Joey. I'm about to bottle some more honey up. I got another little order to fill, about 24 bottles. So I'm gonna bottle them up right quick. Let me get these things out of here and get set up and we'll get started. Max thinks he's running him off. Well, I just missed the power company or the crew that changed the pole out. The old pole that was here had been here 40, 42 years. So they yanked it out of the ground, stuck another one in there. I don't know when the underground crew's coming. Just got back from Hammond. Went and picked up a few more of these wax dip boxes. I like this thing. That's what I'm going to I try to buy a few every year until I get everything replaced. He had just a few more left and somebody was coming to get those. So I took 12 here. I may go get some more when he starts cooking. That's a fine box. That's it. <clears throat> Even though it's called a dripless valve, it's gonna drip one time now if I just stop. That's another reason I have the rag. I'm gonna be able to clean up. See if we can see any crystals in there. Oh, I don't have my glasses on. Oh, 
what y'all see? See a few little bubbles. Okay, in case you're interested in the little bottom tank, it's homemade. Um, wasn't my idea. I actually come up with it searching on YouTube. I'll link the video to where I got the idea from. But uh, he actually built his own valve too. But I didn't want to get involved in all that. I really wanted a bottom valve. But all this is is a food grade 15 gallon drum. And it actually even has a, a band that you can tighten it up tight on here. But I like leaving it loose. You see how much moisture it build up? If you need to dry your honey out, you can actually slow it, but surely you can take that moisture out of it if you want to. But <clears throat> Tighten it up, it's subject to kind of get, build up a little pressure in there because I don't have a relief anywhere, so I just leave the lid sitting on like that. But all it is is a, a blanket, a, a barrel warmer for a 15 gallon container. And I have. This is my controller. I use the same kind of controller for my honey warming system. Right now it's unplugged. But uh, I use the same system for my honey warming uh, box that I made with a whole freezer. Uh, I use the same uh, controller for my um, Incubator, and they, they really work well for me. They're, they're just, a, I don't even know, $20, $30, something like that. But um, I've got it on a little toolbox jack or whatever mechanical jack. I usually let it up and down where I can lower it all the way down to the floor and uh, fill the drum up. Now, I've got, let me show you. <clears throat> I've only got, oh, y'all got to hang on, maybe four gallons left in there. I'm about to fill, or not fill, but I'm about to pour another five gallons in there, and I wanted to go ahead and draw up these, this order first, and then go ahead and fill that up, because it'll take a few days for it to actually get any crystallization is set up in the bucket even though I have it in honey warmer. Well since I mentioned about putting another bucket of honey in the bottom tank, I figured I'd go ahead and show you how I do that. So let me get reset up here and we'll lower the table and pour this bucket in. It's been in the uh, my honey warming box for a couple of days, maybe about three days. Two years. I, I don't know what it looked like before I put it in there. You've seen the reflection of the lid. Okay, let's see. They may be sugar down in the bottom, but that looks pretty good at the top.
got the cable buried to this point anyway. Sit here, ready for the power company to come do their part. That's good. Another thing I do here, when I add another bucket, mainly when it's got crystals, or I'm just blending it in with something that's in there, I'll stir it. And this stick doesn't get used for anything but stirring. That's all this is, is a stirring paddle. And there's ridges, if you can hear that. They trap, there's crystals trapped in the little ridges for strength in the bottom of this barrel. The heat doesn't get to it, so it'll actually build up crystals there. Normally I just leave it alone. I did that where you could actually hear it. Listen, you can hear them. But they settle in the ridges and just when you start bottling, they're, they just stay there. And if you do get any of them, I always put my bottles back in my honey warmer for a couple more days if I see crystals. If I don't see crystals, I don't worry about it. Well there, that ought to be good mixed. There we go. Next time I need the bottle, it'll be ready to go.
And what I probably do then is just use this one for honey that I have for myself. Because I have a five gallon bucket right now just using a honey gate to keep my own coffee sweetener and some that I give to people and stuff like that. Just maybe older honey or honey that's a little darker or don't, it's a little stronger or whatever, and I use it for sweetening. I always do that in a five gallon bucket. When I do get me a, a good bottom tank, I'll probably just use this for that. Anyway, I just thought I'd show that to you. Thanks for watching. Got some stirring up a little bit. Let me get over here and check them out. Looks like all of them's doing good. Soggy this ground is. Kind of wet out here. Pollen coming in. Pollen coming in. These are really going. Yeah, I got an interview cover here. Let's peek in. Yeah, Check them out, see what the weight feels like. That one is real heavy. 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 Heavy, they're all heavy. In good shape. 